Hey there, this is uh, Jason, and I am, uh, as you may be able to tell just by looking at the background here, um, I am at the uh, Louvre Museum um, courtyard area here in uh, Paris, France. It is a really, really pleasant evening out. Uh, a bit cloudy with a nice, a nice cool breeze. Not even a little bit hot, not even like at all. It's uh, July the 12th here in Paris, which oftentimes does get really hot, but it's not really hot today. Um, and uh, yeah, the last uh, day and a half-ish, and then for the rest of the night tonight, we're going to be walking around, enjoying this really phenomenal city. It's a really, really big city with a lot going on. But uh, I've had something on my mind that I would like to, again, just kind of quickly discuss with everybody and get your opinion on. I'm gonna hear what everybody has to say about it, no matter what your opinion is, whatever kind of thoughts come up. Um, I've just been, I'm looking at the Olympics that are about to get started here in just, um, you know, a week and a half or so. Um, and just all the international people in this city. I mean, oh my gosh, every market and cafe and sidewalk and place that you can go has got so many people from every part of the world. So many uh, Africans, so many people from the rest of Europe. Uh, people from different parts of the Americas, so many uh, people, a lot of Chinese really. Uh, Paris has a lot of Chinese people here for business and for vacation and tourism. Um, and all over the world, right? Everywhere, of every continent, Australians, everybody you can think of, right? There's just so many people here. And then the Olympics coming up, you know, uh, really just signifies a massive uh, uh, competitive landscape, right? And it's it's always intended to be with the best intentions in terms of, uh, you know, like the fellowship and the uh, kindness and sportsmanship and just the gestures of uh, interconnectivity and goodness between different peoples of the world, you know, not just trying to crush your opponent uh, like we see in competition sometimes, right? But uh, anyway, my question to you though, I've been thinking about this, right? I'm seeing all these people here hanging out, working, living, uh, exploring on vacation, whatever they're doing, everywhere. You know, all these different languages all over the place. Uh, all these different cultures. I do hear French more than anything, as you would expect, right? I'm, we're in France. But I've been thinking about competition. Uh, just really, you know, while I'm walking around. And I was thinking, you know, if you go back in time through most of human history, competition was, was a, a survival uh, requirement a lot of the time. You know, like if there was a tree that had some fruit on it, and your tribe was on this, or let's just say you, you were on this one side and somebody from another tribe was on the other. You know, whoever ran and grabbed the fruit first was gonna eat. And the slower person or the one who didn't pay attention or the one who got, you know, fought off or whatever, they didn't have anything. And so you had to be faster, smarter, and pay more attention before the other people or you could possibly die from it, right? Either that or just have a really bad time until you did find something. And so competition has evolved, you know, over the years. And now it's oftentimes just, a, you know, for sports uh, and entertainment. Um, but, uh, you know, human beings still, it's a big part of our spirit. You know, competition is a, is a massive part of uh, the human psyche still, uh, sociologically. Uh, it's a big, it's a big money-making machine. It's a big uh, activity that people pay a lot of attention to. And so my question is to, to everybody really is, do you feel like competition, this is not a question about market capitalism versus socialism or anything like that. It's not, this is not an ideological question in terms of those, those terms people like to use. But if competition has evolved from the way it used to be, where it was, you know, one, one army against another, which we still have, you know, one tribe against another, you know, we cooperate so much better now. You could say like, well, how's that? How do you know that, Jason? How do you know that people cooperate better? Well, think about what I said at the beginning of the video. You have a city like Paris that is full of all these different people with all these different backgrounds, all speaking their different languages, cooking their different kinds of foods, doing their different kinds of things. And then they come together and really make it work in these big cities like Paris and a lot of other cities, right? Lots of other cities do that. Paris is just a great example of it. And so, um, so that's how we know that humans cooperate better, right? And so, so with human beings having changed now to where you get people from all these different backgrounds 
cooperating. You know, which is something that that you kind of see with uh, my favorite nonfiction author, uh, Yuval uh, uh, Harari, uh, who writes. You know, he wrote uh, *Sapiens* and uh, *Homo Deus* and a bunch of other stuff, and he speaks a lot. You know, you can find him on YouTube. Uh, Yuval Noah Harari. You know, he says that human beings are the only species on the planet that can uh, do one thing that the other species can't. In addition to some other really important stuff, including language and, you know, higher cognitive thinking. Human beings, uh, according to uh, Yuval Harari, is that we are able to cooperate in massive groups with strangers, right? Human beings can cooperate with huge numbers of other humans that they're not the same tribe as in order to get some things done, you know? And there's lots of examples of that. And again, I'll just stick to the primary example, which is Paris, France. You have people from all over the world coming to this one city and they cooperate to make the city work, right? And then by the city working, them and their families as inhabitants of the city and participants in the cooperation of the city, they get the fruit of survival by having a place that works for their lives, right? And so, um, so Paris still competes, these people still compete, the country of France still competes, but you have, you have strangers from different backgrounds that come together now and, and work for the same goal of uh, helping this population center work, right? To, to help this life here work. So um, again, like, uh, what am I getting at here? Is competition still something that human beings really need to be at, at our best? So there's the, there's the question there. Is this something that we, that we need in our lives in order to push ourselves to be the best? Um, and then where does competition go too far? You know, like at what point, at what point do cooperation and competition, which they're not mutually exclusive, right? You don't have to have one or the other. You can have them both working at the same time. You know, a, a team cooperates in competition with another team. And so you can have both. I just, I'm asking you guys now at this point in humanity, there's a really great guy with a freaking awesome badass name named, uh, his name is Merlin and he's one of the docents here at the museum and I had about a 15-ish minute talk with the guy about various things you know really really smart guy and uh, he was just saying that you know mankind is the same bodies the same most everything that we have been for a long time but now technology has taken it to a new place you know our bodies might not be the same as they have been for a long time for very long you know we might we might have this marriage between our human bodies the way they have been and the technology that creates almost a new species, which is some stuff that Yuval Harari talks about, talks about a little bit in some of his writings as well. But, um, you know, where are we going from here? Uh, where does competition take us in terms of a good place versus a bad place? Where does it go too far? Even things, you know, like, uh, like technology, you know, are humans any good at putting limits on the places that we're taking the tech and the, the, the places that the tech takes us? Or does it just kind of run away with us because we just push things so far? Uh, I do want to say, you know, it was interesting. This afternoon at lunch, there was a, a gentleman, younger guy, who sounded very intelligent. And he was sitting at a, a cafe table with two Chinese, one of which didn't speak any English. And then the other one was translating. And it's almost like they were interviewing him about... They were interviewing him about his business, which was in seemed like the medical technology arena. And just like, just really taking this information. And it reminded me again about how competitive the Chinese are. Uh, the, Chinese are. Uh, uh, the guy I was speaking with earlier today, uh, he was saying that in his opinion, there's like this almost, there's almost this like Chinese underground network controlling parts of Paris. I don't know if he's right or not. I don't know about that. But the Chinese are so competitive. Like they really want to be the best in the world which I don't know if the US, the US has always wanted to be the best in a way, but I don't feel like it's been so much of an obsession the same way that it is with the Chinese. And so that, that competitive pressure, that competitive nature, I mean, now you can disagree with me. I mean, the United States may just, may be uh, complacent at this point because after World War II, we just have had all this time of being this massive superpower with not a whole lot of competition in many ways and, and times have changed. I just, uh, I'm really, really fascinated by what it, what it does to, what it does to people's minds and their hearts and their spirits, uh, and that, that whatever it takes to win attitude, you know, is there a price to be paid there? I feel like there is. 
I remember I was refereeing a soccer game several years ago, and I had to drive to a small town, and their their uh, their wall inside the field house where the athletes got ready said, "Whatever it takes." That's what it said, right? Whatever it takes. And so, if you actually subscribe to whatever it takes in terms of winning, well, whatever whatever kind of means anything, right? And so that means that you cheat if you have to, you uh, play dirty if you have to, um, you just do whatever you got to do to get over your opponent in terms of having leverage and winning whatever you're trying to win at. And so, um, you know, some people might say that's what rules are for, right? Well, whatever it takes doesn't say whatever it takes within the rules. It says whatever it takes. So let me just get back again. You know, I, I like to keep these question videos under 15 minutes. Um, what is your opinion? I really want to hear from you guys. <clears throat> what is your opinion on where the line gets drawn between competition uh, in terms of making humanity and an individual stronger? Uh, where does the line get drawn in terms of where you stop yourself as a team or as an individual on uh, on where competition can take you in terms of uh, you know the sacrifice that gets made for your spirit in terms of you know maybe doing things that aren't particularly nice or playing fair or you know corrupting to yourself because you just are so obsessed with being number one and so I look at it I look again at a at a city like Paris and I know that the business is here and the uh, the country of France and their sports teams you know look inside you know France like they have got you know very competitive soccer teams they've got co competition all over the place let's talk about their uh, pastry shops here the uh, boulangerie every damn one of them is amazing okay like you go in there and grab anything and it will freak you out with how freaking bad ass amazing the pastries are well here's why that is i think hello how are you say hi <laughs> thank you she was waving it randomly i was like oh man what says such a nice kid gotta gotta get you on camera but um i like friendly kids i like friendly kids but uh, friendly people in general. But uh, I think the competition of knowing that you have got to be at your best, right? If you're gonna make pastries here in Paris, France, they have got to be badass, or you don't stand a chance. And so to me that shows like, things are so competitive here. If you have even a mediocre pastry, right? You're gonna get shut down because they're all so freaking good. They're all so amazing. You've gotta be amazing too, or you don't stand a chance, right? And so that's like playing, you know, that's like playing as a professional soccer player in, uh, you know, Spain or England or France or some of these other countries that have amazing leagues. If you're not the best of the best, you don't stand a chance, right? Uh, maybe that's the case with world-class business. You know, maybe it's the case with uh, having to come to the Olympics like they're doing here in, uh, in Paris here just to here in a, you know, a few, few days later this month. So I, I know competition does make us better, right? Where have we come as a species? Where have we come as a species in terms of competition? Where should we be going as a species? Where is humanity going from this place forward now competitively? Has our ability to work together shifted that much? Is it gonna continue to shift? And then what's it gonna look like? You know, what is competition gonna look like? How does competition look in a way that will make us stronger and better, not just for the team trying to win, but for but for the entire uh, human race, right? For the entire species, how do we make the best out of it so that we can be the best we can without destroying the planet, without destroying each other, without making a mess out of everything, which we oftentimes do, right? So again, please, I wanna hear comments from everybody. What are some things you see uh, on the planet right now that just show the good side of competition? What are some things you see that show the dark side of a competition? Uh, what are your thoughts, again, on, uh, on the best way to make that work for everyone, if you think it can? So I've got 30 seconds here. Um, I hope everybody's doing really, really great. Paris is a massive city with a lot going on. And I do think, again, it shows, it shows like many other cities do and many other examples, a way that a bunch of strangers, not just individual strangers, with, with their differences, but, but peoples, right? Cultures with lots and lots of differences. A city like Paris shows 
how all those differences can get put aside so people can come together and really operate a city in a successful way. It's not perfect, right? It's not perfect. There's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of trash. There's a lot of things that can be better, but it's a cool city and, they, and it works. It's a cool city and it works and a lot of people live here and a lot of people love it, whether you're a resident or a visitor. So you guys let me know, please. Let me step up here, show you a little bit about the uh, about this beautiful central court, courtyard of the Louvre here in Paris, France. What a beautiful freaking day. Um, so yeah, let me know. How are you being your best? How can we be our best as a species and as, a, as all these different people that make up the human race? Uh, let me know whatever you think about it. Anything you have to say is something I want to hear. And my opinions are incomplete, okay? <laughs> I, I don't claim to know anything. I just claim for sure to want to know more, which is where you guys come in and where we come in again to cooperate and help each other be smarter and uh, just better citizens of the world, right? All right, uh, thanks again. I will be seeing everybody soon. Thank you, Paris, France. Uh, thank you to uh, everybody out there and I'll catch you later.